And we're back. Well, well, well. Look what we just discovered about Maxine Waters, the mouthpiece. From Paul Joseph Watson at Prison Planet. In 1998, Maxine Waters called impeachment a coup d'etat. Suddenly, it's not when a Republican is in power. In 1998, Maxine Waters called impeachment a coup d'etat, a disregard for the voice of the people. Let's take a look. Mr. Speaker and members, how must our American soldiers feel to have their commander in chief under attack while they are engaged in battle? They have the right to feel betrayed and undermined. Today, we are here in the People's House debating the partisan impeachment of the President of the United States of America while the commander in chief is managing a crisis and asking world leaders for support. This is indeed a Republican coup d'etat. Mr. Speaker and members of Americans, all the Republicans will couch this extremist, radical anarchy in pious language, which distorts the Constitution and the rule of law. Bill and Hillary Clinton are the real targets, and the Republicans are the vehicles being used by the right-wing Christian coalition extremists to direct and control our culture. The rule of law has been violated in denying the president notice of charges by the abuse of power in the collecting of so-called evidence and the denial of the presumption of innocence. President Clinton is not guilty of the trumped up charges presented in these four articles of impeachment. Yes, Bill Clinton is guilty of certain indiscretions in his private life. However, he did not commit high crimes and misdemeanors. Rather, the president is guilty of being a populist leader who opened up government and access to the poor, to minorities, to women, and to the working class. President Clinton is guilty of not being owned by the good old Southern boys or the good old Eastern establishment. President Clinton is guilty of being smart enough to outmaneuver the Republicans in the budget negotiations, electoral politics, and the development and implementation of the people's agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, I am an African-American woman. I'm accustomed to having to fight and struggle for fairness and justice. Ken Starr, I know and recognize abuse of power when I see it. You are guilty. However, I am greatly disappointed in the raw, unmasked, unbridled hatred and meanness that drives this impeachment coup d'etat, the unapologetic disregard for the voice of the people. My Republican friends, what you do here today will long be remembered and recorded in history as one of the most despicable actions ever taken by the Congress of the United States of America. I dare the Republicans of this House to allow themselves to move just one inch and give me and my colleagues the opportunity to vote for an alternative. I dare you to be fair. I dare you to allow us to vote for censure. I yield back the balance of my mind breaking. Jason Chavez's last day revealed. According to multiple sources, Jason Chavez will be leaving Congress by June 30th. From Politico, Representative Jason Chavez of Utah is expected to announce Thursday that he is resigning before the end of this congressional term, according to three sources familiar with his plans. Chavez did not respond to a request for comment Wednesday evening or Thursday morning. Multiple sources say he will leave Congress on June 30th. Be curious to find out why. He seemed like he was doing a good job. Look what they found after reviewing President Trump's 18 calls and emails to Russia. What started out as another article meant to damage President Trump, the Reuters report detailing his phone calls and emails to Russia turned up with no evidence of wrongdoing or collusion between the campaign and Russia in the communications reviewed so far. From Prison Planet, a Reuters report detailing how Trump campaign advisors were in contact with Russia during the last seven months of the campaign admits there was no evidence of collusion between the two parties to influence the election. 
dismantling the left's entire Russian narrative. Although presented as another major scoop designed to damage Trump, the article, which is based on intelligence sources, completely vindicates him. Michael Flynn and other advisors to Donald Trump's campaign were in contact with Russian officials and others with Kremlin ties and at least 18 calls and emails during the last seven months of the 2016 presidential race. Current and former U.S. officials familiar with the exchanges told Reuters. However, the true substance of the story is buried down in paragraph 6. The people who describe the contacts to Reuters said they had seen no evidence of wrongdoing or collusion between the campaign and Russia in the communications reviewed so far, states the report. No collusion between Trump and Russia. Let that sink in. The article also highlights how the back-channel communications were made with Russia in an attempt to bypass the U.S. national security bureaucracy, which both sides considered hostile to improved relations. In other words, Trump wanted peace with the world's other nuclear superpower while forging ahead with a joint plan to destroy ISIS. How terrible of him. Despite no evidence whatsoever having been presented of Trump or anyone on his campaign colluding with Russia to influence the election, the deep state and the democratic establishment is intensifying its effort to portray Trump as illegitimate. Boom.